Usually, YouTube drama goes like this. One person makes a video on someone, and then that person makes a response video, and then the original person makes a reaction to the response video, and so on. This story is a little different, because it started when one of them left a single YouTube comment, and then the other one made an entire 20 minute response video where he pisses himself with rage. So, at least it's something new. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my commentary channel, I'm happy you could join me today. Today we're going to be looking at a conflict between two creators who are on very different sides of commentary YouTube. And maybe conflict is the wrong word because of how one-sided this is, but you'll see what I mean. As I stated in the intro to this video, this drama, if you could call it that, started with a YouTube comment and ended with a 20 minute long meltdown of a video. But before we get into watching that nightmare, I'm gonna have to give you a little bit of backstory. This is D'Angelo Wallace. He is a YouTube creator who is very quickly being hailed as the leading face of documentary style commentary on YouTube. He runs two channels that produce in-depth looks at celebrities and trends. D'Angelo himself has a very dry sense of humor, his delivery is very precise and almost surgical, but he presents the information in a very informative and easy to digest way. I've personally been a fan of D'Angelo for a long time now, and I think he is a great role model for anyone who wants to learn how to present their arguments in a very well-structured format. Sneeko, on the other hand, represents a very informal style of commentary. Usually the format of his videos is delivered with him outside, interviewing strangers, or using hyper-visualized edits to emphasize his points. Because of this informality, Sneeko is usually abrasive, unfiltered, and unapologetic in what he says. And full disclosure, I do have a bias going into this story, because I'm a fan of D'Angelo Wallace, and I am no longer a fan of Sneeko. Frankly, I used to be subscribed to Sneeko because of his editing. I'm a film student studying editing, and I was pretty impressed with his video style. I usually didn't agree with his opinions, but I convinced myself to look past it. And then there just reached a point in time when I could no longer look past the content of Sneeko's videos, no matter how he was editing them. Inside look of New York breaking curfew, why do Asians ignore racism, and I have a story meeting a fangirl like Chris D'Elia, I don't apologize. And then when I watched these videos, I decided that I was done with Sneeko. I didn't want to participate in his videos anymore. So I did what any reasonable person would do, and I just quietly unsubscribed and went on with my life. In fact, I forgot Sneeko existed until I heard about this story. But apparently while I was gone, Sneeko made a video titled, We Broke Up, Sad Emoji, where he interviews his ex-girlfriend discussing the end of their relationship, where he cheated on her. Tyra said, what did she want from the relationship that you couldn't give her? I guess complete loyalty. If you're gone for like more than three weeks, like, you know what I mean? Like it's time to, you know, I'm, I want to- Three I'm, weeks wanna, though, come on man. Three weeks is a long time. Three weeks is a long time to not see anybody, like that's a long time. Bruh, I'd give you like, I'd give you like at least like two months, three months even. Two months? <gasps> Understandably, Sneeko's audience didn't really like this video. The dislikes are significant, and a majority of the comments are condemning Sneeko for his actions. And it's perfectly warranted. If you've ever been cheated on, you know how deep of a betrayal it can be. And for Sneeko to play it off as a joke in this video, it feels extremely disrespectful. One of these many comments condemning Sneeko, however, was D'Angelo Wallace. All he said was, he's for the streets, making light of his cheating. Was this comment uncalled for? Maybe. But it wasn't any different from any of the other comments that that video was getting, it was just different because this was from a huge YouTuber. But that little comment is what prompted Sneeko to make a 20 minute response video tearing into D'Angelo's content that comes across as an immature meltdown. And look, before we start, I have to add this little disclaimer before anyone gets the wrong idea about me or the intentions of this video. While I might sound harsh on Sneeko, this video is not meant to make fun of him or to profit off of the beef between these two. That's not what I do on this channel. I want to look into why this response video does not work and how Sneeko's arguments do not present himself in the best light. 
that is something I could stand to learn from, because this entire channel is me presenting my arguments. I want to know how to do that well, and sometimes that includes looking at what not to do. Also, before we start this video, I'm obligated to remind you to please like this video and subscribe if you haven't. It helps YouTube know I exist, so I would really appreciate it. Thank you. Without further ado, let's watch Sneeko's response video, forcing myself to watch D'Angelo Wallace. We're gonna watch this video, Influencer 19. It's an hour and 10 minutes. I only saw like 10 minutes, I was skipping around and I was getting mad. You don't have any redeeming qualities. Not only at his braces and the fact that he looks like a TikTok Lil Tecca. Okay, it is not a good idea for your opening response to someone to be going after their looks. It doesn't reinforce your points at all and honestly just deflates any other argument you're going to make. It makes sense to roast someone's looks if they roast yours first, because then it's like an equal distribution. But to open up your response video trying to attack someone's looks, it just comes across as weak. And remember, Sneeko is pressed over a comment. A comment with four words. He's this mad. Not even just the fact that he dresses like Ellen, just his voice, his face. I don't want to fight him. I don't want I don't want to hit him. I, I wouldn't want to punch this guy in the face. Look at his I love his braces. Sneeko can make fun of D'Angelo's appearance all he wants, but to me it will be more embarrassing that he's this worked up about it. I can't take anything he's saying seriously because he's acting like he's backed into a corner and just swinging wildly. I tried to be nice. I considered making this a chill video where I just vaguely talk about the situation. Some influencers are throwing parties and that's bad because we're kind of in the middle of a pandemic, so. Shut up with your fucking passive aggressive. I'm morally better than you because we're in the middle of a pandemic. One thing you might notice about Sneeko or his content is that He's not really a big fan of the pandemic. And to be fair, neither am I. I've been trapped in this apartment for what feels like fucking forever. But D'Angelo's video here is criticizing the celebrities who endanger others by going out and setting bad examples to their audience. Sneeko thinks he's being obsessive over celebrities, but in actuality he's providing valid criticism to people who are already existing in the spotlight. I know you sat with the teachers at lunch. It's not a judgment of you, I just know you did because I knew so many kids like you who were, I'm better than you, and I just think of no reason better than to not snitch on you. Okay, if you're trying to do a roast, do less impressions. If you watch any professional roast, you will see smart, like carefully crafted jokes about someone's character. You don't see impressions, especially not ones this lazy. All Sneeko is doing is scrunching up his face and making a funny voice, and it just comes across like a kid trying to do a dance for attention while his parents are busy. Why am I being so polite to people who can't even find enough compassion within themselves to not endanger the lives of everyone around them? I don't see a reason to, so... That being said, I have a lot of names to name. This is the dude, like, when the teacher would ask a question, he would raise his hand like, <laughs> Um, does anyone know the polynomial? Yes, Miss Anderson, I do. I know the answer. Dude, you have to drop the school jokes. We're three minutes into this video, and you've made the same joke six times. It wasn't funny the first time. Why did you think this would be the right thing to circle back on? I surprised my closest inner circle with a trip where we could pretend things were normal. I don't get why people get mad at what celebrities are posting. Just unfollow them, don't go on their page, close your laptop, turn off your phone. Okay, what Sneeko is saying here has merit. What Sneeko is saying to do here is exactly what I did to Sneeko when I stopped enjoying his content. I unsubscribed and moved on. But what he's entirely missing is that the public perception of this virus is crucial. There are so many people that don't believe in this virus or don't think wearing a mask does anything that these celebrities with their influential platforms actually can do a difference depending on how they talk about this. The fact that they can sway public opinion on this is really important. I think there's validity in criticizing how people like the Kardashians keep throwing public parties. It's not celebrity obsession. It's a valid critique on how people in different classes are treating the pandemic differently. Using pay, dealing with unemployment, missing government checks, new childcare responsibilities. You see that girl whining right here, like, you're broke, wah, 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 you're broke. Get your money up. Why are you complaining about how broke you are and exposing, I can't pay for my kids and I can't pay for my granddaughter? That sucks. That sucks. 
Why are you telling me? Let her live her life. Her life is way better than yours, apparently. Get your money up and stop bitching about it. Sneeko, telling an unemployed mother to get her money up is sick shit. Just incredibly tone deaf. Adding sad violin music over her tweet is borderline sociopathic though, so way to go above and beyond. This time they had a no social media rule. Take all the photos you want, but please do not post on social media of any kind. That, see, that's weird. Like you even know the invitation cards that they had at this party. You just sound mad that you weren't invited. You idolize celebrities. You're really involved in the Kardashians life and it's more fun to trash them on Twitter than to admit that you're a fan. Does he think D'Angelo took that picture himself? It's obviously posted by somebody who attended that party. It was posted online and given out to the public. Why does he think D'Angelo had this in a secret folder? I don't get it. How can you call that fan behavior if I can look up online and see the same thing? Sneeko's arguments can be deconstructed with just the slightest amount of pressure. And that's how I can tell that this is an extremely emotional and reactionary response. I know this video would be a lot stronger if he actually took the time to think about what he was saying, but clearly that's not what's happening. There were so many people there. The Weeknd, Doja Cat, Justin Bieber, Haley Bieber, Saweetie, Quavo, Jaden Smith. Imagine doing that for people that weren't celebrities. Say they were just normal people, they hosted a party and they were posting pics online and then you gathered all the evidence and tied ropes up and he didn't wear a mask and he showed a blade and he, he didn't even, they didn't even tell people to wear a mask and they said no social media posts, but then they post, it's a party, you bum. Sneeko is mad that D'Angelo knows who these people are. They're celebrities. Look, non-celebrities are getting together and throwing parties, and it's valid to criticize them too. But Sneeko is mad that D'Angelo knows who all of these people are, despite them all being well-known celebrities. I don't know how you can be mad at that. At the very least, this video is teaching me not to have Sneeko on my debate team, because he is melting down bad very clearly outlined Los Angeles guidelines that said gatherings of people from three or more different households should be all right that, that should be a red flag immediately if a black guy is saying they didn't even follow Los Angeles County guidelines you're lost you're, he's, he's lost no person of color should be reciting Los Angeles County guidelines they weren't even following as everyone in the world can tell I am a white guy and if I am speaking out of line I want someone to hold me to that and correct me on this but why is following the COVID-19 protocols in LA not a black guy thing? I'd understand if Sneeko is making a comment on how LA County treats its black population, but this isn't a conversation about race. It's about following the virus protocols, and people of any skin color should be following the COVID-19 protocols. Either I'm entirely missing this point, or Sneeko is. It's one or the other. And just so we're clear, they're all pathetic. Pathetic. And I end every word like this. They hosted a party during a pandemic and I have braces on. All he does is mock. It's the weakest argument he has and he keeps using it. Any argument he has that could have carried some weight is immediately crushed by him scrunching up his face and making that voice. You look desperate, man. If you're ever in an argument, don't do this. It immediately shoots yourself in the foot and you've already lost. There's like 10 ads in this video. I just earned a Sneeko $1. Even that's too much. Favorite influencers are at huge house parties during a pandemic. It's funny that he's shouting out just the white version of him. <laughs> just another gay nerd with glasses who's probably talks the same way and snitches on people. I knew we'd get here eventually. These are the worst type of gay guys. Can we talk about that? There's a lot of like cool ass gay guy. The gay guys who be in the gym with the tank top and the mesh shirt, those guys are chill as fuck. They host great parties. They're mad fun. They know all the bitches. Yo, those gay guys are plugged up. They probably know how to dance and stuff like that. These are the gay people who don't know how to sing. They don't know how to dance. They weren't good enough to get invited to the musical theater performances. So they end up just snitching and just whining for the rest of their life. And they probably get fat by the time they're 28. It's unfortunate, really. I might have missed this, but I don't think D'Angelo has ever stated his sexuality. So Sneeko is just making an assumption here and then trying to roast him for it. Like, do you see how that doesn't work? Also, why does Sneeko think the only cool gay people are muscular and go to the gym? What the hell's that about, buddy? 
So now Sneeko's leading arguments are mocking and homophobia, which you probably don't need me to tell you are pretty bad legs for your argument to stand on. I haven't heard a single good rebuttal to any of D'Angelo's points here, which just makes this video a 20 minute waste of time. What am I doing here? They don't have good sex. I pr they probably just finger each other. I doubt they even use dildos. I doubt they get freaky with it. Gay dudes really be the freakiest motherfuckers out there. The gay guy will go on Grinder and find some dick in 10 minutes. These are the type of gay guys that will just be like, oh my God, I'm not a slut. I don't go on Grinder. Put your finger up an ass. You know what I'm saying? Like be a good gay guy if you're gonna be gay. Okay, we've now hit two minutes of Sneeko just talking about gay people. Like it's an obsession. The Sway House is literally the exact same thing as Live House, but they're actually talented. Just kidding. You didn't think that was gonna be true, did you? I'm better than you. I have talent and you don't have talent. <laughs> and I'm better because they don't have talent. I just made a joke. <laughs> I'm just gonna take a shot every time Sneeko resorts to mocking because being trashed might make this video watchable. Bryce Hall's 21st birthday party, I think, is one of the biggest gatherings I've mentioned so far in this entire video. Some footage actually looks like a mosh pit. It actually looks like a mosh pit. Just sitting there observing, mad as hell, hoping you go down. This person you do not want in your circle. Straight up. Actually take them out financially. That would, I would, I would love that. I would love that. See, they Look at him. I would love if you went bankrupt and you died. There's some weird hater energy inside of you, dog. Oh no, dude. You do not get to throw out that phrase after everything I've just watched. This is all from a comment. One YouTube comment. One YouTube comment with four words. You want weird hater energy? That's what this is. This is the new definition of weird hater energy. Like, Only we, the non-celebrities, were the ones mad about this. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Now he's trying way too hard to fit in like you're not an influencer. You have millions of subscribers and you're talking like we, the non You're famous. You are an influencer. You're the same as these people in the video that you're complaining about. Finally. A point that Sneeko and I can agree on, kinda. Because D'Angelo Wallace has a large subscriber base and a lot of fans willing to listen to what he says, he does have influence. He's an influencer. And the way things are online, that does make him a celebrity. But if anything, this just makes D'Angelo's points even stronger because he's a celebrity who is using their influence and power for good. He has more of a right to criticize other noteworthy figures for breaking these regulations because he's managing to uphold them, despite holding a similar status. Sneeko, you are like 0 for 50 on all of your arguments. You should have taken a day to plan this out. This is not the right way to respond to anybody. What? They're doing more harm by going to a party than somebody with a weapon. It's weird that these first world rich ass people are getting so tight about COVID, but you go to like any actual place in the world and people are living their lives and they're not invested. They don't really care what other people are doing. If you're really afraid, you stay inside. But if you wanna continue opening your business, if you wanna continue doing and living your life, people aren't judging you. The only place that this exists are weird ass rats like this online. Sneeko is of the belief that protecting yourself and others from COVID is a lifestyle choice and not a health-based decision. Newsflash, but nobody wants to wear a mask and stay inside all the time, dude. We're doing it because we don't want our grandparents and immunocompromised friends to have to breathe through an oxygen tank. How is that so hard for people like you to get? impossible to measure the impact they're having on spreading the idea that COVID-19 isn't real among children. They're not spreading the idea that COVID is not real. They're just not at risk because if you're like under 30 and you get COVID, you're fine. That's just wrong. Statistically, you have a better chance of survival if you catch COVID and you're under 30, but that doesn't make you fine. You're just saying that to downplay people's reactions. And it's not just weird, but it's stupid. And it's not just stupid, but it's dangerous. And it's not only dangerous, it's also weird. Yes, Charlie D'Amelio's parents and her friend group decided to take a trip to the Bahamas, traveling from the actual COVID capital of the world, Los Angeles, to the Bahamas, which is relatively fine. So that's a lot. So that's a lot that you can't even, you can't even get on a plane. There's not even, you were going with this whole COVID guidelines before. She's just getting on a plane, which is perfectly legal. And that's a lot and people buy it. If you cut out all the reactions where Sneeko is making that stupid face, this video would be two minutes long. Also getting on a plane is legal. 
D'Angelo didn't say that. You just have to wear a mask. What he said is traveling from an infected city to a relatively healthy one is irresponsible and dangerous, which is true. However, that didn't stop anybody from finding out because fans actually bumped into the D'Amelios and their friend group in the Bahamas. People started looking around at the rest of Charlie's group, seeing travel photos, and they quickly pieced two and two together. Ugh, it must suck to be that famous at that level. I'm starting to kind of relate to that. Like I'd be walking around and people are taking videos of me like, whoa, is that Sneeko over there? And it's like, you could see the street signs in the video, like bro, Relax. When you get that famous, everybody starts acting like the police. I know what that's like on a minor scale. People spying on me, people filming me when like they think I'm not looking. It's not a fun feeling. <laughs> when you can't even feel like you could live your life without being investigated by internet cops. Everyone, I think we just cracked the code. Sneeko is getting overly defensive with this video because he's relating to the celebrities in this story. He thinks his actions are going to be analyzed just like theirs. He thinks he's going to be used as an example. This is, it's all coming together. Now his reaction and his whole video makes sense. I'm just kidding, of course it doesn't. None of this makes sense. Also, can paparazzi please stop giving attention to these people? Paparazzi stop giving attention to these people in a video that's an hour and 10 minutes of you giving attention to these people. You're doing the exact same thing, stupid. If I can just, pull myself away from this flattering angle for a second. What the paparazzi is doing and what D'Angelo Wallace is doing cannot be compared in any depth. D'Angelo is covering this story to provide a message about celebrities' actions, to condemn what they are doing so that we, as an audience, can engage with that media from a new and informed perspective. The paparazzi are simply trying to profit from covering celebrities. No angles, no commentary. They could get paid simply for posting a blurry picture of a TikTok star. So these two agendas are entirely different. But outside of that, let's stop pretending like these people are cogent enough. D'Angelo Wallace, you got me feeling some type of way, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Those glasses, give this one little bit. I challenge you. You wanna box me, bro? Let's do a 1v1 boxing match. You say I belong to the streets? Yeah, I belong to the streets. We could rock this out on the streets and we could do it in the ring, bro. It's still about the comment. This entire pissing party is just about the one comment. How insecure do you have to be? This shit is just embarrassing, man. It's not too late to delete this video because this just looks bad on you. Personally, I think response videos should be thoughtful with a lot of care put into them to accurately reflect what you're trying to say. This is just emotion and adrenaline and insecurity and it just hurts to watch am livid to say the least and that is because i am inside the circle i know why they're doing it it's for views the, the why are you making this video what's your higher moral reasoning for this if you don't you don't care about views that's why you put charlie d'amelio and james charles ass in the thumbnail because you don't care about views oh and here comes the views argument it's a classic one I don't think D'Angelo made a video on COVID-19, a topic that YouTube is demonetizing videos for, for profit and fame. I think he did it as an informative and educational deep dive into the topic. You know how I know that? Because that's what all of his videos do. Adam of the barrel videos to watch. Like nobody thinks they're actually talented, funny, or interesting. Sometimes people just- Me, I think that they're talented, funny, and Nelk Boys are extremely talented. They're extremely funny. Jake Paul, Talented as fuck. I actually take back what I said earlier. This is how you immediately deflate your argument. By saying Jake Paul is talented? I don't want this video to become about Jake Paul, but talent? If you want to defend Sneeko in the comment section of this video, be my guest. Just know that you are defending someone who, on the record, just said that Jake Paul is talented. That's on your soul. Shortly thereafter, he was caught on a yacht party passing around this hookah in other words like passing around the corona you're literally doing fbi work right now this dude was probably in the fucking bushes over here right <laughs> is that a hookah buddy i wish this could be considered investigative journalism but no this information was taken by someone and then released to the public obviously how is this considered a real argument i could find this image by googling jake paul yacht 
it's not hard. I started making this video in November, but halfway into it, I was actually informed that both of my grandparents caught COVID-19. Every single point about somebody choosing a party over the life of my grandparents, basically, it like cut through me. Did your grandparents ever think about not hanging out with TikTokers? If your grandparents were at risk, like why don't they just stay the fuck home? You know what I mean? We have now reached the point where I find Sneeko's comments irredeemable. This is no longer a joke about the difference of opinion. This is now about human decency, which Sneeko fucking lacks. Yeah, it's all sad. I, people are dying and it's not fun. Not fun when people die. It's not like I have a no regard for human life because I got on a plane. If your grandparents are afraid of dying, they shouldn't be on the goddamn plane. D'Angelo made this video because it hits close to home. His grandparents caught this virus, so he knows what it looks like up close. For Sneeko to try to take that and turn it into a punchline is inhuman. It's not funny. You can't pass that off as a joke. It's just cruel and desperate and sad. I don't know if people realize that that's traumatic in and of itself. It doesn't make me suddenly okay now that they're still here. Sneeko, dude, Go fuck yourself, wholeheartedly. Adding sad violin music over someone talking about almost losing a family member is fucking deranged. That's not dark humor. That's not you being edgy. It's just you publicly being a piece of shit. Regardless of whether or not people are literally dropping dead from COVID-19, it is still just ravaging everyone's life. If you can't bring yourself to find enough empathy, millions of people, who are indirectly affected by this, Aww. in addition to- Sneeko was so busy looking at his reflection in the camera that he absolutely missed the point of the video that was addressing people like him. This is about empathy. It's about caring for human life. And it's about holding those who are taking their platforms for granted responsible for the messages that they're spreading. You need to get off the internet, get off Twitter hashtags, get out of the Taylor Swift is over party, get off that, let's get in the ring, take out your braces, and also make better videos. I think you're capable of making better videos. I think you're capable of using this investigative police work to something that should matter. Weave, 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 yeah. And that's a lot, go off. Sneeko, you suck, dude. You gotta start spending time with better people. But this video is not about making fun of Sneeko or attacking Sneeko. It's about how to conduct yourself when responding in an argument. So, let's go over everything that Sneeko did wrong. So I can safely say that this entire thing was doomed from the beginning. D'Angelo made a comment on Sneeko's character, so Sneeko made a response video judging D'Angelo's content. Just respond to the comment with another comment, dude. Like, there's no need to amplify this whole thing by making a video about it. Secondly, Sneeko's entire video was him using elementary school level responses. Mocking, homophobia, challenging him to fight. It's playground shit. None of his responses seemed well thought out or anything. It was just insecure whining the whole time. So if you're going to respond to someone, Address their points while standing up for yourself and your own arguments. There's no need to get emotional or try to get a rise out of someone by stooping to immature reactions. You know what the funniest part of this whole situation is? D'Angelo never responded. No comment, no response video. There's no proof that he even watched this video at all. And that's almost the perfect response to this video because now D'Angelo doesn't have to ever acknowledge Sneeko which just leaves this tantrum of a video an example of Sneeko screaming into the void. I'd like to wrap up this video by saying that I think we all know that how Sneeko handled himself in this response video is not it. How he carried himself in this video was wrong. We all know that his method of responding here doesn't make him look good. I don't think you need me to tell you that. Even Sneeko's comment section believes me on this one. That's the only good part of his video, is reading people's responses. So whenever you're next in a situation where you need to respond to someone or defend yourself in an argument, just take a moment and think to yourself, don't be like Sneeko. And then you'll probably be fine. Thank you guys so much for watching this video to the very end. I know this was a bit of a long one, so watching it to the very end means a lot to me. 
I will leave some more videos on screen and I will leave my social medias in case you want to connect with me outside of YouTube. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy. Keep taking care of yourself and others because you deserve it. Oh my god, that's strong. Oh, there's so much alcohol in this. I will see you back here for the next video. I love you lots. Bye.